okay good evening to everybody we will start with our uh, today's webinar and the title which we have given is the uh, pulse of wisdom by senior pediatric surgeons i always believe that we can learn a lot from our seniors the experience what they have gained over the years which we can't learn from the books and this lockdown has given us the opportunity to learn from our seniors especially on the internet connection webinar what is happening today online webinars i think it is the best tool of learning we can learn sitting at our home from the seniors which otherwise you may not get the access very easily so this is going to be our second uh, webinar learning from the seniors we had first one on last saturday which was again from maharashtra where uh, uh, we had dr santosh karmarkar and uh, dr dinesh kitu who, who spoke on their experience in general and that gave us an idea that we continue to have uh, this uh, webinar for at the title of course which was uh, last saturday after the very first webinar was over pulse of the wisdom and uh, uh, so this is our second and in future we will keep on bringing the seniors from whom we can learn there are many not only india but abroad who are willing to participate in this uh, webinar so we will continue with that today we have three speakers which includes dr bharti kulkarni dr jyotsna kirtane and dr vengankar they are all three from mumbai and uh, they are going to participate today because we initially thought of having this as a get together of uh, maharashtra of pediatric surgeon uh, uh, pediatric surgeons from the maharashtra it is like online get together but i realize that why limit it to maharashtra and now we are going uh, online global probably we have participation from bangladesh and others from middle east africa europe may join and even from other parts of the world so uh, i will request uh, dr jyotsna kirtane my teacher of graduate guide also and uh, all my basic i learned from her <coughs> uh, being in jj hospital so i will request her to tell us about her experience of pediatric surgery how she joined how she cultivated uh, in different uh, interest and how she continued over the years madam kirtane please am i audible now yeah you are audible okay uh, what First i would audible. request one one minute madam there is an option on your uh, screen all participants where you can pin the video so where dr kirtane's name will be there if you pin the video you will continue to see madam kirtane and others will not be seen so you all of you can do that so it will help you to see and provided uh, they want to see in the video <laughs> so <clears throat> we continue to see seeing you and not others what what option you say rasi where no i said provided you want to see continue If you don't you part, don't in have participants a... list if you click on participants and on dr kirtane's uh, <laughs> name there will be pin video somewhere where i not able to see right now but if you see that if you pin that then you will continue to see her and others will not be seen otherwise whoever speaks they that person will be seen madam please go ahead Okay, first of all, let me thank you, Rasik, for uh, having this idea and organizing this uh, lovely show. Um, I always look forward to the meeting with Maharashtra Association of Pediatric Surgeons. It's a much closer group and very friendly. Uh, 
today i don't think i am going to give any pearls of wisdom as you call it uh, because if what i see around is the junior people who are very senior in their own right now has far superseded what we had achieved in our lifetime and people like rasse karamadwar everybody i mean dasmeet you have all i'm so proud of you all that you have achieved so much in your own fields and you're spreading the knowledge all across so so that's about me you can tell you a little bit about my journey so my journey started at km hospital in the college and uh, how does one select a specialty one has to have some exposure so i had done rotation in different specialties and uh, pediatric surgery really appealed to me i don't think i had any role model but i just fell in love with pediatric surgery and uh, dr ashish gandhi was a teacher who was i mean he was a superb um, teacher a very intelligent person and stimulated thinking process we used to look forward to his clinics on the side of surgical uh, hand dr vaingan kar our senior registrar who was there at that time he proposed simple things like hernia hydrocel and this and that testes and stuff like that uh, so there on i moved on to adya children's hospital where uh, i was a lot of major surgery and like dr dalal subhash dalal was there dr rustam irani was there and funnily at that time i was a common registrar in both the units so while one unit used to have outpatients going on the other unit would be in the theater and i would be wanted in both the places so it was like a tug of war at that time can you imagine that we didn't have even a radiologist for some time and we had to develop our own x ray films take the x rays develop the x ray films so things were very different we started with even venous access was by with bd needles you mustn't have even seen they were bd needles metal needles and uh, it wasn't easy to get those veins in small babies and we had to resort to veni section something which one doesn't do at all or doesn't even dream about so we came from very primitive things and have gradually come to this stage so what i thought was important here and i think it is very important to rotate because whatever said and done if you stay with one institute your thought process usually follows that of your seniors and you continue doing and thinking the way they do and if you go to different places you are exposed to different people different methodology different thought processes and i think it is a matter of growing up in this field getting more ideas and more different types of surgical procedures uh i really felt liberated when i entered jj hospital because the atmosphere was totally different dr vasant talwalkar is a wonderful boss and uh, he was the one who opened our eyes to one one thing he always used to tell us just because it is printed in a journal somebody has written an article it doesn't mean it is 100% true a lot of people distort facts while publishing at least it used to be the case and therefore it is very important what he taught us was please question everything please question it yourself and check out if this is really true the other um, impetus i got was when i was awarded the british commonwealth fellowship and i was so lucky to work for one full year at the prestigious hospital for sick children great ormond street and um, over there initially of course my first day i went to the theater i was very new to the whole hospital and i was very abhi dadu sun rahe ho can you hear me am i audible yes yes madam please continue 
So this is just in the lighter vein. My first day at GOS and I went to the operation theater and I asked, where is the changing room? One guy promptly showed me a room where I went in and changed. It was men's changing room. So, you know, people can act naughty. Luckily for me, there was not a single man inside over there and it didn't matter. Um, I learned a lot over there uh, because that was a tertiary care institute and the best of people who were there and uh, people like Edward Kiley, Ed Kiley, Professor Spitz, Philip Ransley. So I learned really a lot of things in my stay over there. And one thing that was um, very commonly seen those days and which was in vogue, one was of course in general pediatric surgery was um, the sidioblastoma, the sidioblastosis and subtotal pancreatectomy. And the other thing was gastroesophageal reflux, which Professor Spitz was very much into. And I got to review a lot of cases because I wrote, he asked me to write an article, collect data on complications of uh, Nissen's fundoplication. That was the procedure he used to follow there. And uh, that exposed me to a lot of uh, old cases and I, we brought up this uh, nice paper. Uh, what I liked over there was being very, very honest and frank. The first seminar that I attended was uh, surprisingly titled The Mistakes I Committed. Now, nobody likes to admit mistakes. Everybody has beautiful results. People only talk about the success stories. People don't like to talk about their complications, the bad results. But here I was, and I was wondering who would start the ball rolling. And it was none other than Mr. Nixon the senior most person at that time, he started talking about the mistakes he committed. And that was it. Once he started it, everybody else came out with their mistakes very frankly, very openly. Who doesn't make mistakes? But it's a great thing to admit having made a mistake and take responsibility for it and then to rectify it. Um, so after coming back, the funny thing is, in back home, nobody believed that there is anything like gastroesophageal reflux. Those days, I'm telling you, I had I met with so much opposition. I remember still we had presented some paper about reflux in operated TOF cases, operated cases of esophageal atresia. First of all, in the 80s, early 80s, there were very few survivors of TOF surgeries. Uh, but we started in JJ. I remember we had that time in the 80s. Sudhakar Jado had taken, um, taken out the statistics. And we had something like almost 80% survival rate in those days. Which was something to talk about. And because we had survivors, we also saw the complications of reflux and strictures. And um, people used to foo-foo. No, no, there's nothing like reflux. You're just imagining it. But then, of course... I persevered. I think it became too unbearable, literally, because I every time, every opportunity I got, I would hammer in about reflux, gastrointestinal reflux. And um, I was lucky to have access to the first pediatric pH probe, an enorectal manometer, which we set up in our little room in the office. And a lot of people did research on that. Um, Suyodhan, I think, uh, then Samir did on Hirschsprung disease, so he used enorectal manometry. And uh, basically, the atmosphere was really nice. I remember the days there was no, there were no computers, no PowerPoint presentation. We had to have ordinary transparency slides. And I joined a work, photography workshop, learned how to develop films, and we made a small dark room in one of the recesses of the board. And that is where we used to develop our films, put them in those uh, folders and uh, slide projectors, practice before conferences, the timing. So it was, it was all very uh, nice and intriguing and interesting. Um, 
Have I overshot my eight minutes, Rasik? Well, the best part, have I remember time. the highlight. Madam, of, Madam, you can go on for 20, 25 minutes. Because no, 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 I don't want to talk so much. But is it OK? I mean, am I audible? And is it? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, on okay? yeah you are fine, madam. Continue. Okay, thanks. Yeah. Um, the highlight, I think, uh, of my JJ tenure was the first international workshop that we had, live workshop, when I inv invited uh, Philip Ransley and Edward Kiley to do live surgery. Those days, workshops were not commonplace, not like it's today. It was a rare thing and it was much talked about. First of all, there were a lot of queries. Do you think Philip Ransley is going to come if Josna Kirtan invites? He's a big man. He's not going to come. I mean, these were words of a very, very senior consultant, pediatric surgeon. Anyway, they were all very pleasantly surprised and shocked to see that all our guests did arrive in time and they performed wonderfully. Uh, the projection was so, I mean, this was our first experience. We had to have generators. We had to air condition the whole child welfare center, put up dark curtains. I mean, to what minute details we had to go to. And I must tell you that the entire team was working overtime. All my <laughs> residents. At that time, Dr. Mane was there. Of course, he was uh, on the staff, not a resident. Rasik was there. I think um, uh, Sujoy Das, Sanjeev Kaddu, Dasmeet, Sam, all these people were there. And we, everybody was working overtime. And we had a fantastic uh, workshop. And it was talk much talked about later on also. And then, of course, later on, we also had Professor Spitz and Ed Kylie come. Philip Ransley came again. So we have had a lot of workshops uh, from Great Ormond Street consultants coming and demonstrating surgery. And that gave a lot of impetus to our uh, doctors, our residents. And uh, after that workshop, we started doing a lot of hypospadias, epispadias, even uh, augmentations. I remember when I called up Ed Kylie before he came, I said, what would you like to show so that we can arrange cases? So he said, I would like to show Malons. I said, I beg your pardon, what is this? I'd never heard. So he burst out laughing. Oh, it's come in so such and such a journal of pediatric surgery, this issue, which hadn't arrived in Mumbai at that time. So he briefly told me what it was about. It was Pat Malone. And the story is very interesting. Now, Pat Malone is a ur urologist, and it happened that one of the Saturdays, you know, after rounds and all, that is, he was doing a sub uh, rotation in Great Ormond Street at that time, neurology. So, Philip, uh, Ed, and Pat Malone went for a beer to the beer bar. And uh, Mitrofenos was a common thing by then, and everybody was using appendix to have a catheterizable stoma for Mitrofenos. He suddenly said, after a glass of beer, Pat Malone says, why not we use appendix to give enemas, continent enemas? And that's how the procedure was thought of in a beer bar. So these are stories which, of course, Ed Kylie told me, Ed Kylie and Philip Ransley. And uh, after that, we also started doing Malone, such a simple procedure and yet such a um, meaningful procedure for people who are children who are incontinent. Um, what else? I really, I'm just, I have not thought about what to say. I don't have any PowerPoint presentation like Santosh had. But uh, if I think of something, I can come back later, I suppose. Uh, what I think is very important and what I learned more in Great Thomas Street was being, having a lot of empathy. You have to talk at length to the parents. They're so anxious. It may be the simplest of problems for you, for a surgeon, but it is very large for the parent. And it is so important to find the time and comfort the parents, assure them, explain to them. And this Dr. Talwalkar also taught us to draw diagrams. The parents may be illiterate, 
but even then it is our responsibility to explain to them what the child is suffering from what we plan to do what may be the anticipated problems and that assure them that we will take care to prevent these problems and if at all anything happens we will take care of it so empathy reassurance being with the child at all times being with the parents at all times holding hand holding is very important um and one more thing is i don't know if my residents will remember but once every 6 months i would call them home to have a nice party i think it's very important to you're strict and very disciplined in the ward you want the work done properly but there has to be have some you have to have some leisure as well and fun and games also meet you come more close together so what i would end by saying that today uh, i think every teacher likes the students to do better than what the teacher has done i don't think i'm a great person but my all my students or who served us there in jj hospital at that time has done extremely well and i'm very very proud of you all that's all rasik on to dr vaingankar or bharti who so ever is coming next thank you thank, thank you, you madam uh, i'll unpin your video so that uh, you know i can see everybody now uh, uh, whatever uh, madam has said uh, i mean we we know part of that not everything uh, but i will like to say few things uh, we learned a lot from her which includes a few things like photography Uh, apart from pediatric surgery what i am saying uh, the second thing is during that residency we had good discussion on every day particularly mondays before we had surgeries on tuesday and thursday when i was resident and we used to discuss everything about any surgeries on monday after our opd for almost 2 to 3 hours and we learned a lot and when it came to the exam we knew exactly what question answers are going to be happening another thing which we learned uh, is doing x rays ourselves we used to go to the radiology department with the patient and do x rays on our own and which i still do it even today uh, i think today is uh, saturday so on friday or thursday thursday we had two mcu which i attended and uh, even catheterized the child myself so you know you know exactly what you want to see so all this what we have learned in residency which we still continue to do it and from today's talk of madam if i have to take few points which will include that you have to question whatever you read it is not 100% truth truth lies somewhere in between the two lines and you need to find out that some of the article may be 100% correct but not all and that is even the new england journal as well as lancet journals editor after 20 years of chief editor post if they are saying today the same thing i think you have to be careful when you interpret anything then rotation so i will i will request uh, uh, all teachers that allow your students to rotate not only within the hospital but even outside the hospital if if they learn from outside for an example if i have a student at jj hospital if he can go to the km hospital visit some of the days or cyan or in private hospital like if they come to srcc so they learn and you know by uh, observing or assisting different people they learn a lot the third thing is of course if we can do intercity it may be still good and uh, partha is here so i will like partha to say few words after i summarize this uh, then mistakes we commit in fact what i say today uh, unless uh, this is i am talking when i commit a mistake if i don't go and acknowledge that to the parents or to the pediatrician i cannot take care of that well so first thing is any any mistake which we are likely to do first is we have to tell the acknowledge 
that yes, I have done a mistake. Then obviously you can do corrective steps and you can save the child if it is if the mistakes are not good. Then uh, GERD, even today, Madam said 40 years back, but even today, or when I started practice about 20 years back, when I went and told that I can do laparoscopic fundoplication. So some of the pediatricians told me that I have never got the fundoplication done in my life. This is after 20 years of their practice. So the, uh, the situation has changed today, at least in, in metro cities like Bombay. And we do uh, not huge number, but we still do it maybe two, three in a year. Unlike in USA, where we were doing about 100 fundoplication every year, we are not doing that many, but we are still doing some. Uh, empathy, very important. I think all of us have to take care of that. Drawing the diagram today also, means two, three days back, we did one partial nephrectomy uh, last Friday. So when it came to explaining the, my colleague, hematoncologist, when I draw the diagram, it becomes easier they will be able to know whether they need to uh, give what kind of chemo, no chemo and all that. So very important diagrams and hand holding. So these are the few points which uh, I think we have learned from uh, Madam Kirtane.